During aging, NAD degradation can be linked to increased homocysteine and decreased methionine. So let's check out those pathways. So first, starting with NAD, an age-related increase for CD38 will degrade NAD into nicotinamide. And note that I'm just using CD38 as an example. There are many ways to degrade NAD during aging. So an increase in nicotinamide will then be converted into nicotinic acid, thereby increasing nicotinic acid levels. And this is via Le Chatelier's principle, which shows that an increase in reactants, in this case nicotinamide, will shift the reaction to the right, thereby leading to an increase in products, in this case nicotinic acid. An increase in nicotinic acid will then combine with S-adenosyl methionine, otherwise known as SAM, and converting it into trigonelline, which is just a fancy way of saying methylated nicotinic acid. As you can see, their nicotinic acid now has a methyl group attached. Now that methyl group came from S-adenosyl methionine, which now converts that into S-adenosyl homocysteine, or SAH. The importance of that increase for S-adenosyl homocysteine, when nicotinic acid is converted into trigonelline, is that higher levels of S-adenosyl homocysteine will lead to higher levels of homocysteine. And that's what we'll see here. So SAH is right there. And again, by Le Chatelier's principle, an increase in reactants, in this case SAH, will lead to an increase in the product, in this case homocysteine. So we can see how NAD degradation is linked with an increase for homocysteine. Now, also during the conversion of nicotinic acid into trigonelline, we have the depletion of SAM, S-adenosyl methionine. And that's important because lower levels of SAM will lead to lower levels of melatonin. And we can see that reaction here. So under normal situations, S-adenosyl methionine combines with uh, N-acetyl-5-hydroxytryptamine, otherwise known as N-acetyl serotonin. And together, they combine to form melatonin. So we can see how NAD degradation links with an increase for homocysteine and also, also a decrease for melatonin potentially linking deficits in energy production, i.e. NAD low levels of NAD during aging, with an increase for homocysteine, which links with vascular health and dementia risk, and also lower levels of melatonin, which could affect sleep quality and or duration, things that are very important during aging. So with that in mind, if we specifically increase trigonelline, can we increase NAD and melatonin while reducing homocysteine? So why would I think that that's possible? So if we increase trigonelline, again, by Le Chatelier's principle, that should shift the reaction to the uh, products, which in this case would be nicotinic acid, while consuming S-adenosyl homocysteine and producing S-adenosyl methionine. More on those in a minute. An increase in nicotinic acid will then be converted into nicotinamide, and then the increase in nicotinamide will then be converted into NAD, again, by Le Chatelier's principle in each situation. So that's possible that an increase in trigonelline will lead to an increase in NAD. Now, also during this process, it, by converting trigonelline into nicotinic acid, as I mentioned, S-adenosyl homocysteine is consumed. So with that being lower, we should expect homocysteine to also be lower. So trigonelline, increasing trigonelline may also lead to a reduction for homocysteine. And then in the conversion of trigonelline into nicotinic acid, we saw that S-adenosyl methionine levels would be increased as that methyl group would be transferred from uh, trigonelline to S-adenosyl homocysteine, thereby forming S-adenosyl methionine. So now we would have an increase for SAM. And when SAM is increased, we should get that uh, leftward shift from reactants to products, thereby increasing melatonin. So will that work? And to first address that, we need to know which foods contain trigonelline. Now, there are some supplements that contain relatively low levels of trigonelline. I prefer to get it from whole foods first. If others want to go the supplement direction, that's on them. But for me, I prefer to get it from foods first. So with that in mind, which foods contain trigonelline? And that's what we can see here. Atop the list is coffee with 2,200 micrograms of trigonelline per gram. Now, I'm not much of a coffee drinker, and I can get into that into the comments. That's a side uh, the tangent. Um, and there aren't any major reasons uh, other than I prefer tea and I'm already super hydrated. I can't add that in too. So nonetheless, second on the list, chickpeas. And I often get asked on the, on the, on the channel, you know, why don't I include legumes in my diet? And that's also a side uh, answer. It's a tangent to what uh, the video is about. But if anyone's curious about why uh, legumes aren't a major part of the diet or hadn't been, I can, I can fully detail that in the comments. So chickpeas have 350 micrograms 
of trigonelline per gram of chickpeas, second on the list. So with that in mind, I've added chickpeas back into the diet. I did include them for a few blood tests uh, a couple years ago, but they didn't move biomarkers at all, so I took them out. So I've reintroduced them, or I reintroduced them a couple of days ago, which then opens a few more questions. First, will eating chickpeas increase trigonelline? And we can measure trigonelline levels, plasma levels. This is using Iolo's at-home metabolomics, metabolomics kit. I now have four data points for plasma levels of trigonelline as shown there. And note that they're on the low side, 0 0.29, 0 0.15, 0 0.4, and 0.11 micromolar. Interestingly, for my highest level at 0.4, that coincided with when I was supplementing with 600 milligrams of nicotinic acid per day, which shouldn't be a surprise because, again, Le Chatelier's principle, the reactant in this case would be nicotinic acid. Some of that would be converted into trigonelline, which it looks like it may have done. Again, I can't imply causation, though. It's just one test. I would need a lot more data to show that that was causative or not. It could just be normal test-to-test -test variation. If you're interested in measuring trigonelline and 600 other metabolites that are included on this test, there's a discount link in the video's description. All right, so second, if I'm going to include chickpeas in the diet, something's got to come out in order to stay calorie neutral. So what will I reduce? Two possible options are barley and oats, which in pulling up a second study, and note that all the studies in the video will be in the video's description, we can see that barley has very low levels of trigonelline. And I should mention... If I didn't already, the barley and oats are already a part of my diet. These are two areas where I could remove to add uh, chickpeas. So barley has very low levels of trigonelline, just 0.25 micrograms per gram of barley. When compared with oats in this study, which had about 112 micrograms per gram. In other words, about a 400 times higher dose of trigonelline in oats in this study when compared with barley. And also in confirmation that oats have a decent amount of trigonelline, we can see in the study above that they had 230 micrograms per gram. Still not as high as chickpeas though. So I can see the argument for uh, reducing or eliminating oats and barley for the next test and completely replacing them with chickpeas, which I may do until the next test. So then third, the question is, will it work? And to address that for the next blood test, which will be uh, January 15th in 2023, in addition to the standard chem panel and CBC that I do for every test, I'll also send blood for NAD, homocysteine, and metabolomics, including trigonelline. Now, in terms of melatonin, uh, I can't wake up in the middle of the night and draw blood, and even spitting in the middle of the night to do a saliva sample for melatonin may not be the best bet either, as that may impair my sleep quality for when I'm doing that experiment. So subjectively, I'll have uh, you know, measures of was I sleeping better or not, and I'll have the objective data of sleep duration as the fitness tracker tracks that. So stay tuned for all that data in a future video. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including at-home metabolomics, which measures trigonelline, and it, as I mentioned, 600 other metabolites, NAD quantification, epigenetic and telomere testing, or microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB, diet tracking, green tea, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, which is what I've got on here, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.